Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Brett oh, Sullivan! Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Um, so I, uh, I recently turned uh, 28 years of age, which means I've been single for about 28 years. <laughs> and uh, the longest I ever dated a guy was for four blowjobs in college. And, um, and that's because uh, historically I, I tend to date men in which English is their third to fourth language. Um, <laughs> Case in point, I, I went on a date once with a guy named Takuji, and I say date loosely because by the end he was still mispronouncing my name. <laughs> and, uh, and during though, uh, during the date, uh, I referenced that I was a comedian and had performed on Comedy Central, at which point he asked me, what is comedian? <laughs> so I just drew a picture of a clown and I left the bar. Um, <laughs> But my friends, they assume that I'm single because I'm like inherently promiscuous. And it's actually quite, uh, quite the opposite. In fact, I use the internet um, to just sort of live my vicarious sexual lifestyle. I go way out of my way to use the internet to avoid sexual contact with individuals. <laughs> so I want to walk you through five examples uh, of how the internet has changed my relationships. And, uh, and I want to start with, uh, with the very beginning. <clears throat> so uh, <laughs> the most awkward conversation I ever had with my dad was in 1996, uh, right after we got AOL. Because when we got AOL, the first thing I thought to do was to create a screen name, log into a sex chat, and pretend that I'm a woman. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's not what you did when you were uh, in seventh grade? That's not what you did? <laughs> I just didn't know that you could be reported uh, for being on a sex chat. And that specifically, your dad would receive an email with quotes as to why you were reported uh, on a sex chat. <laughs> And I was in, you know, seventh grade, so this is mostly third base rhetoric, nothing too hardcore. Um, but I remember doing this uh, on a Friday night solo sleepover, as I called them back then. <laughs> <coughs> and I remember coming downstairs the next morning and sitting at the table, and all my dad said to me was, did you tell someone last night that you have a wet pussy? <laughs> And uh, I tried to lie and say it wasn't me, but my screen name was my first, middle, and last names. <laughs> Brent James Sullivan, 69. I added a 69 at the end, uh, true to form. <laughs> but shortly thereafter, I created a new screen name, and I went back to the sex chat. And this was actually a surprisingly profound moment in my life. Because I realized for the first time that I could use the internet to communicate with whoever I wanted anonymously. So I could, I could be whoever I wanted and whatever I wanted online. <clears throat> so cut to a year ago, uh, I, got re uh, I got down on the, the subway station at Bedford Avenue and I noticed that like 25 feet in front of me there was this guy who was like so attractive that it was like annoying. Like, do you ever see someone who's so good looking like you kind of want them to die? Like, I, j I just like hated him. But I immediately regressed back to being like a sixth grader and all I could think about doing was somehow getting his attention, impressing him, and convincing him I'm like the coolest guy on the planet. Which was a total waste of time because he was clearly straight and I say that because he was holding his wife's hand. A total waste of time. But in my head, I'm like, man, he is out of her league, and I am awesome. So as I was walking towards him, I could feel this balled-up receipt in my pocket. So I had the idea to take the receipt, throw it into the trash can that he was standing next to from like eight or ten feet away, and in my head, that was going to blow his mind. <laughs> he was going to see that and be like, that dude is so athletic. Maybe I am gay. Just planting seeds all around Brooklyn, planting seeds. So uh, it, it, as I drew near at this point, he and his wife were kissing their baby. They um, <laughs> had an ugly baby with them, which I assume is from her previous marriage. So I had to cough to get his attention. And he looked, but fun fact about me, eye contact gives me diarrhea. 
So I just averted my eyes, uh, made the throw, looked back just in time to realize I actually hadn't grabbed a receipt out of my pocket. I'd grabbed a wrinkled up $1 bill (laughs) that I just fucking threw in the trash to impress a heterosexual father of one or more children. And uh, of course he saw me do this, so he gave me this look of confusion. And all I could think to say was, whatever. I don't need a... But then the train came. The train came and we got on uh, the train and something very important happened on the train. He saw someone that he knew and he started a conversation with that person, which enabled me to take our relationship one step creepier by muting my iPod, listening to his conversation, and feverishly typing clues into my phone that would enable me to find his Facebook profile later. (laughs) So, for instance, his name was Chad, he was from Virginia, and he lived in Brooklyn. So I typed that all into my phone. And then, uh, to, to top things off, I decided to take a picture of him with my phone for later. Um, here, this would be, I just bought my phone, so this is one suggestion for anyone who would like to covertly snap a photo of a stranger sitting across from them on the subway. Turn off the flash. <laughs> definitely, definitely want to turn off the flash. Because you turn into a gay creep pretty quickly if you don't. Uh, When the flash went off, we gave each other looks of equal levels of astonishment. (laughs) And I was so embarrassed. I'm like, these phones are stupid. And then I got off the subway because I don't deserve to go anywhere. And I walked home. But when I got home, it took me about two hours to find his profile on Facebook. But unfortunately, Chad from Virginia's profile was on private. But I really wanted to see his pictures, and I don't take no for an answer. So I created a fake profile that I used to friend Chad. This is Laura Holscotter. (laughs) She is an assistant manager at a wet seal in Dayton, Ohio. And she loves Nickelback. (laughs) Probably her favorite band. Um, Laura entered my life because of Chad, but I continue to use Laura to friend people that I just cannot bring myself to friend under any circumstances. Uh, Let me give you a couple of examples. This is D. Rizzle. He's the white rapper from my high school. He was one of my least favorite people growing up, uh, so when I found out that he was a white rapper, I couldn't give him the self-satisfaction that I actually wanted to follow his career. (laughs) But I also couldn't miss out on lyrical gems like this one. You know I ain't lying, I love me some tatas. You know I live free, call me Hakuna Matata. talented guy. Um, This is a guy I saw in a rerun of Family Feud. (laughs) I normally don't like to acknowledge that I watch the Game Show Network during the day, more or less make fans out of 22-year-olds, but I wanted to see if if he had any shirtless pictures, and he did. (laughs) Uh, And the next one, this is a neo-Nazi who keeps tweeting about Obama's birth certificate. I would debate him myself, but I'm afraid if I did, his eight-year-old daughter would shoot me in the face. (laughs) And you'll notice at the bottom that Laura is not a fan of that picture. (laughs) So, (laughs) typically, there are one of two reasons why I can't friend someone. Uh, A, because it's creepy. Uh, You can't just friend someone and and write a message to be like, hey, saw you on the train, so I muted my iPod, and I listened to your conversation. I took notes, and I came home, and it took me two hours, but I found your Facebook profile. LOL. (laughs) You know, why friend him in the first place? That would be a good question. Uh, Because super hot dudes go to the beach more than anyone else in the world, and they use Halloween merely as a vehicle to take their shirts off. Check out the profile of the hottest guy from my high school before Laura friended him. How the hell am I supposed to jerk off to that? And after. Good God. 
also, uh, studies have shown that 20% of all people have some form of nude picture on their phone or their computer, and Laura doesn't mind getting her hands on that <laughs> under the right circumstances. The other reason uh, is uh, sensitive. I'm a very sensitive individual, and if I friend someone with my regular, real Facebook profile and they don't accept, I want to move back in with my parents. I like just. <laughs> I freak out, and uh, like I, I was very sensitive as a kid. Like I was always, uh, I was always crying. Um, like I always, I hated being disconnected from my mom for any length of time, regardless of the circumstances. So whenever we were disconnected, I would do whatever it would take to be like reunited with her again. Like remember those kids who came to school in first grade, like just to throw up. <laughs> And they always had like a juice stain right there and a rat tail in back. Yeah, that was me. Um, so at this point, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Laura. Um, it's important to note that Laura has never been mean or antagonistic of anyone, uh, unless it was maybe uh, the neo-Nazi. Uh, <laughs> but there's a famous, there's a famous example of a, a mother in the Midwest who actually created a fake profile and she used it to bully her daughter's enemy until the girl actually killed herself. Um, so to put you at ease, obviously Laura doesn't do that. She only deals with people who are 18 years of age and older and uh, she's very much a benign figure on the internet. Um, so let me introduce you more to Laura. Uh, no one actually knows what Laura looks like because they only use photos of a redhead with her face covered. Um, and that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's partly for safety reasons, because I'm like, what if I randomly chose some girl's photos to represent Laura, and then like, even though it's unlikely, that girl runs into the neo-Nazi and his daughter at a grocery store, and then he kills her or something. So I try to be as conservative as I can with pictures of Laura. So go to the next one. That's her in a hazmat suit. <laughs> Does my butt look big? That is, uh, and this was a photo I posted of her mother. Um, <laughs> Mama's going paintballing again. Because um, it's hard to make friends when you don't have any friends to begin with and no one can see your face. Um, so what she had to do is she had to write a lot of like generic, bizarre, cliche status updates <laughs> that inform people that she was in fact not a robot. Uh, this is one, oh my god, I love whales. I figured that was like an appropriate cliche female cute status update. Go to the next one. Fuck you, Osama bin Laden, USA, USA. Um, <laughs> I love how he says, you know he's dead, right? USA, USA. You better believe it. And then my favorite is this one. Whose dick do I gotta suck to get a smear off ice around here? Hashtag Dave and Busters. <laughs> and then some weirdo in Nevada wants to give me some smear off ice. Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So what she had to do, uh, Laura had to, uh, to, once I created these status updates, she had to friend uh, random individuals. And the first person who accepted, she had to friend all of his friends. Uh, so most of her friends are in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, which is a shitty town about 30 miles from Green Bay. And sometimes people, when she friended them, were skeptical. Uh, so she had to uh, send them messages insinuating that they've met before, although typically while blackout drunk and at a Smash Mouth concert. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, about myself. I, uh, I recently got a letter uh, in the mail from myself. Uh, in 11th grade, there was an assignment in my English class to write a letter to yourself in 10 years. And I guess they pay these teachers enough to actually follow through on these things. Because uh, I got the letter. And it was adorable. I did want to, it was long, so I summarized it for you, but I did want to read uh, my favorite part. So this is from me 10 years ago. Dear Brent, well, it's been 10 years since you wrote this note, so hopefully by now you've left Michigan. Check. <laughs> Started doing stand-up comedy, hello. <laughs> and met the woman of your dreams. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love how at the age of 17, the cold reality had already dawned on me that Michigan is one of the most economically depressed states in the country. But I conveniently chose to ignore the fact that every single one of my wet dreams had prominently featured Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> 
the note actually continues. <clears throat> it literally says, hopefully your future wife will have an amazing personality <laughs> and will be entirely open to adopting children. <laughs> Let me translate that for you. I don't want to touch my wife. I don't want to touch this woman. We will high five once a year on Christmas Day. Um, anyway, I wrote him back, and uh, I want to read my, uh, my response for you. <coughs> hey, queer. I still remember the last crush you ever had on a girl was Dominique Mochianu who some of you may recall from the 1996 female Olympics gymnastics team down in Atlanta. I remember you noting to a friend of yours at the, at the time that you found her particularly attractive because, and I quote, her breasts are so small and muscular. <laughs> Good luck at prom, uh, Brent Sullivan. Um, so when I was a kid, all of my crushes were from afar uh, because that was the safest thing to, to do when you're like a closeted high schooler. I graduated with 600 people and there were no other uh, out gay men in my graduating class despite being in a surprisingly liberal college town. So I think in a lot of ways, gay youth tend to navigate their sexuality almost like a spy in enemy territory and that you have objectives that you are trying to accomplish and you can't let anyone understand what you're actually looking to do. Um, so for me, you know, high school was my Vietnam. <laughs> but instead of fighting communism by undermining the Viet Cong, I was just constantly trying to trick my classmates into taking their shirts off. Um, <laughs> case in point, uh, my parents, we had a pool. Uh, so I would spend weeks at a time planning elaborate no girls allowed pool parties in which I invited just the vaguest of acquaintances as long as they were on the football or the wrestling team under the understanding uh, that I wouldn't go swimming uh, secretly because I haven't taken my shirt off in public since 1997. But I always said it was because I was the designated lifeguard and party photographer. Um... <laughs> And also, this is uh, partly why I like, I love uh, porn. I like love porn, I've spent a lot of time. In fact, let me uh, tell you, the very first thing I did as an adult, the first thing I did, the moment my parents dropped me off at my freshman year dorm room, and before they had left the hallway that housed my room, <laughs> I had joined a porn site. Because I had, a very, I had had a very tumultuous relationship with porn prior to college. Because my parents are big feminists, so they think it's derogatory to women. And it's like, not if it's two dudes, but all right. Um, <laughs> fine. So I was always afraid that they would find my search history. So I started going to Borders and buying Playgirl. Uh, at Borders, but I was terrified that someone was actually going to see me do that, so I always had the cashier gift wrap it, because uh, that shit's free at Borders. So for like two years every month, I went to Borders and I would have the cashier gift wrap it, and like literally around the time that they were like tying the bow around the package, I was like, my girlfriend's going to love this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, right, faggot. Uh, and uh, it's funny because, like, as is, uh, magazines are like a little outdated. Uh, but Playgirl is like just the worst for a teenager because there's like four dudes per issue. You see their dick in like one of the pictures, and like almost all of them look like Burt Reynolds. It's the worst <laughs> magazine of all time. <clears throat> but there has sort of been a saturation of porn in my life. Uh, I feel like the ubiquity of pornography has sort of ruined my life. And in a lot of ways, the excitement and the sensuality around seeing someone naked as a 28-year-old just isn't what it used to be when I was 18. So to sort of like ease me back into being a little bit more sensitive, I decided to get more into softcore porn. Uh, my favorite site for softcore is called Model Mayhem. Um, Model Mayhem is a social networking site, much like Facebook, but it's for models and makeup artists and, uh, and photographers. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing is all these models, they have these amazing pictures and they always have like shirtless or like nude pictures occasionally. So it's an incredible site to join, but to see people's photos, you have to create a profile yourself. And I am far too insecure 
to pretend that I'm a model. So I decided to create a profile of a makeup artist that works exclusively in cat makeup. Um, <laughs> this is Ms. Catwoman. Um, one of my favorite things about creating this profile was uh, finding pictures on the internet that would represent a portfolio of someone that does work in cat makeup. Uh, this is my favorite one. Okay. <laughs> I love this picture because this woman is in full cat makeup, including wig, even though it's clearly daytime outside. <laughs> so she didn't even wait. It's obviously not Halloween. It's not even evening. She, was, she just had a conversation with herself that went, you know what, it might be 1 p.m. here in Peoria, Illinois. But somewhere in the world, it's cat makeup time. <laughs> So she put on her Land's End fleece and, uh, and just did it up. Uh, here's another one. Um, this is uh, a photo, I assume, that was taken right after this woman woke up and just before being thrown in jail. Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing, uh, one of my favorite things about uh, creating this profile was, was uh, writing things in the uh, About Me section that would represent someone who was so crazy that they spend their lives uh, in cat makeup, and uh, let's see, the About Me section. I have only a few passions in this world. One, lesbian fantasy fiction. Two, third world vegan activism. And three, making humans look like cats. Let <laughs> <laughs> me go to the next one. Fact, cats are the most diverse liberal animals on the planet. Fact, cats can probably read your mind. Fact, humans must emulate cats. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> P.S. I'm willing to work any event, including ice cream socials, orgies, car shows, and farmer's markets. <laughs> P.P.S. At photo shoots, I do not do nudes unless the model allows me to apply cat makeup to their genitals, which I apply in a manner that respects both the model and my vision. <clears throat> uh, and much like Facebook, uh, you can write on people's walls, and, uh, and Ms. Catwoman never misses a chance to write on someone's wall. Hi, Tyler. Your shots are amazing. You have a stunning portfolio. My only question, why in God's name are you never wearing any cat makeup? <laughs> <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> uh, these, uh, the profiles uh, that I create are an amazing distraction for my deep-seated fear uh, that I am just like destined to be alone my entire life. Uh, I'm 28 and I've never been even like close to in love, uh, which I know sounds a little silly, but I feel like at some point I should have been in love at, at this point. So even though I know these uh, relationships or nude pick swap ships aren't actually grounded in reality, I feel that they're like a good distraction from actually meeting people or going out and meeting a douchebag or, or meeting a gay Republican at a bar or better yet, meeting someone and they just don't like me. Um, I also, I, I have some issues with the gay community. In particular, I am like terrified of, uh, of HIV. I am like, it's like my biggest fear in the world. And that's partly because in the 90s, uh, when I was growing up, um, homosexuality was just almost implicitly linked uh, with HIV. And uh, when I came out to my parents, the first thing my mom said to me was, uh, you have to promise me that you're going to be safe. Uh, so HIV has become not only just a, you know, a legitimate health concern, it also becomes like a bizarre way that I could conceivably disappoint my parents. Um, <laughs> Which also leads into my problematic uh, sex life. Uh, in gay sex, there are tops and bottoms, and versatile, which in my case means I'm bad at both. Uh, in particular, I hate I hate bottoming. Um, it's like the worst. If you've never done it, it's like being it's like it feels like being uh, punched in the face until the other guy comes. It's the worst. Um, <laughs> So I prefer uh, to top, uh, but I am, I'm an anxious guy and I have a lot of one-night stands, so when I top, it's easy to get uh, kind of nervous and have trouble getting an erection. Uh, so what happens then is, uh, well, I don't, if, I'm, if I do get an erection, then I don't want to like blow it by putting on a condom, because condoms are like boner killers, they're the worst. <laughs> brief barebacking or barebacking without climax. So if someone is like over at, you know, we're like hook, you know, 
the, the garbage. That's what I call sexual relations with myself, <laughs> the garbage. Uh, if someone is over, you know, you go in, you penetrate for a little while, and then and you put on a condom just to kind of get things started. The problem is, obviously, I wake up in the morning sober and just terrified that I just ruined my life or that I'm, I have uh, you know, exposed myself to HIV. And the only way I can feel better is if I go to this person's Facebook profile and look for clues that would indicate they're like an upstanding and healthy, trustworthy individual. Uh, like one time I, I remember giving the sexual handshake to a guy with a ponytail, like what am I doing with my life? And <laughs> but then the next morning I logged into his uh, Facebook account and I saw that he loved Scrabble and his favorite movie was Sister Act. So I'm like, oh, thank God he's safe, he's fine. But with every unsafe encounter that I have, the more anxious that I get, the more anxious that I get, uh, the harder it is to get an erection. The harder it is to get an erection, the more likely I am to not use a condom. And it just comes, becomes a vicious cycle until I am spending more time avoiding sexual contact than actually embracing it. Um, that's also why I've sort of delved into YouTube porn, uh, which is my favorite type of amateur porn. Um, what YouTube porn is, is um, uh, there's like just uh, dudes on YouTube that have like videos of them like working out and shit, like with, you know, no shirt or whatever. And sometimes at the bottom of their profile, there will be, uh, they'll say, I sell private videos, which means I will send you a jerk off video for $50. And... It's amazing because like amateur uh, porn is, is incredible because there's like no production values and so there's like always like some shitty like owl clock in the background or something. <laughs> and it's just a wonderful reminder that this is like real. Um, so I love doing this but in an unregulated market as amateur porn, uh, sometimes you send someone money and they just steal it. Uh, they just don't send you a video. And that happened to me once. Um, I sent this guy $50 to send me a, a, a jerk off video and he, he just didn't. And I was so angry that I called PayPal to file a complaint, uh, assuming that they had like an investigative arm that would <laughs> break into his home in Slovakia, by the way, uh, Eastern Europe, and arrest him on the spot. I did though, I had the foresight to know that this conversation was going to be the saddest most pathetic conversation of my entire life. So I was fortunate enough to record the conversation. I'm gonna play it in a minute. One thing to keep in mind, when I uh, buy these videos um, from people, I never use my real name because I don't actually want them to be able to find me and kill me or whatever they're gonna do, even if they live in Slovakia. So let's play the clip of me reporting this guy uh, to, on PayPal. Hi, this is Margie with PayPal Account Security. Who am I speaking with? This is Laura Holscotter. <laughs> okay, Laura, can I verify the security code and birthday on the account? Sure, 0787, January 1st, 1900. How can I help you, Laura? Um, I need to file a report uh, because I exchanged $50 with this doofus in Slovakia for a video that he never sent. Okay, I can help with that. Uh, let me first retrieve your initial interaction and we can review it together. Found it on December 8th. You sent $50 at 3.45 p.m. Eastern time. He received it and your note to him read, please send me the video where it looks the biggest. Oh, is that, I, is that what I wrote? I don't, I don't remember what I wrote, but yes, I think that, yeah, that's it. What kind of video was this? It was a personal video. Personal? Right, um, like, um, it's like a, like a private vid, like a private video or vid. I don't think I know what you mean. It, um, it, was, a, it was a personal video of an appropriate aged man uh, manipulating his uh, genitalia. Okay, unfortunately our security policy doesn't cover pornographic materials. That's the thing, it's, it's not porn not per porn. se. It's, it, it's like it's a, pr it's a personal video. I'm sorry. Best of I said best of luck, ma'am. That's how it ended. Um, it's a pretty sad moment in my life. Uh, <clears throat> so I, uh, I recently, uh, I joined uh, OkCupid uh, recently, and by the end of the first week, I had six profiles. Um, I had 
a one profile for myself. I then found out that if you go to someone's profile, they can see you visited their profile, so I had to create a, a gay man profile to visit other gay man profiles. Um, <laughs> And then I, I decided to create a, a profile, a woman profile to peruse straight guy profiles. Uh, so I had to uh, do that. Um, and, then, and then this happened. I realized that if no one sends you a message for a week, your profile actually reflects that. It says, no one is contacting Brent. No one, he's pathetic. Send him a message. So I created three more profiles to friend, message myself bullshit. <laughs> Uh, to make sure I never got that message at any point in my life. Um, but an interesting thing happened. Uh, the, one of the first dates uh, I went on, uh, uh, on OkCupid, I, we, I met this guy at a bar, and he was actually going pretty well. And, uh, and he, he said to me, maybe 10 minutes into the date, he's like, you know, there was a reason why I invited you uh, to this date. And I'm like, he's a huge fan of my work. No. Uh, as it turns out, there are questions on OkCupid, and you answer questions. And in one of the questions, it asks you how often you drink. And the options are A, never, B, sometimes, or C, frequently, or you can write in your response. Apparently, I wrote in, I drink, quote, a ton. Um, <laughs> the best part is I don't remember doing that, which means I did it while blackout drunk. Uh, so he told me this, and he's like, you know, I had to be honest, it was the most honest thing I've seen on anyone's profile of all the profiles I've seen on OkCupid. And it made me want to meet you and see what you were like in person. And I had actually just ordered shots, so I did them both, just, uh, just for shits and giggles. Um, and believe it or not, almost four record-breaking blowjobs later. His number is still on my phone. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much for that. Um, so, you know, I think when you leave tonight, I'm hoping that you won't create uh, a fake profile on Facebook because ultimately it's a lot of uh, wasted time. But if I have inspired you to go home and to create a fake profile to friend the white rapper from your high school, could you please just do me this favor? Send his nudes to Laura Holscotter. I would appreciate it very much. Um, well, thanks for coming, everyone. I uh, hope you had fun. Thank you uh, to Justin in the booth. He did a perfect job. Uh, all right, thanks a lot. Thank you.